What's up guys, I have been Dominic Cardone. Uh, so on today's video, I would like to talk a bit about insulin resistance, insulin sensitivity, some telltale physical signs that you're becoming insulin resistant, uh, some blood work markers you can use to pick up on it before it happens, um, how to prevent, how to avoid insulin resistance, how to fix it. Um, again, this is gonna be some very general advice, so you know it may not work for everybody, but for most of you, it may help you quite a bit. Um, and I also feel like a lot of people do not address it. And the reason why I'm, I want to make this video is because I'm currently dealing with severe insulin resistance. Um, if you've been following me, you've seen that I went up to about 293 and I was slamming food. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't doing what I should have been doing, what I would have told a client to do. So now I am unfixing this mess. mess. So, uh, again, I like to talk from experience. Um, I like to share things with you guys because, you know, I just want to, you know, give some information out there to help you guys. So, um, insulin resistance, basically, especially with us bodybuilders, you know, you're eating large amounts of food in the off season. At least, you know, a lot of guys are, a lot of you aren't, um, which a lot of you don't eat enough. Um, but that's another topic for another video. So basically, <clears throat> you know, you notice, you, you should notice some physical signs that you're starting to become insulin resistant. And remember, these are the physical signs, not you know blood glucose readings and stuff, which we'll get into. Um, you may notice that your pumps in the gym are starting to diminish. Uh, you're gonna notice some more fat gain, you know, especially in the lower stomach, lower back, love handles, such and so forth. Um, like when I turn insulin resistant, it actually goes on the side of my chest, my lower stomach, especially my lower stomach. Um, appetite may go down. Uh, you may feel very inflamed. You're gonna look a lot more watery. Your joints may hurt from the inflammation. Um, you're going to be a lot less more full, um, uh, tired, uh, some, maybe some fatigue. So those are some physical signs that you can look out for. Um, how can you prevent this from happening? Get a blood glucose monitor. Um, once a week, check your fasted blood glucose. See where it's at first thing in the morning upon waking. Um, also, too, I like to have people check it two hours after their first meal to see what their postprandial numbers are as well. But most important in this case for most is going to be that fasted reading. Um, with most clients, I like to try to keep them 90 and under. Um, 100 and under, uh, under 100 isn't the worst, but like I said, I like to keep under 90 if I would like. When you start getting over 100, that's where you're going to start running into issues. It's going to keep building up you know, quickly sometimes. Um, you know, uh, very generally speaking, type 2 diabetics happen when they start becoming very insulin resistant. That number's climbing, they don't take care of it. Um, so you're not, you know, storing nutrients. The insulin, your body isn't storing the nutrients where they should go. For us bodybuilders, that's our muscles, that's recovery. Um, a lot of it's going to fat. So, <clears throat> and it's also very inflammatory. It is not good for your heart. It is not good for your arteries. And it is not good for your kidneys. So physical looks and all that aside, the organs do take a hit. So it is very important. Um, you know, today here in America, uh, the diets are horrible. Um, people grow up on fast food. You know, they're eating starchy carbohydrates with saturated fats and proteins numerous times a day. They're eating sugar. They're not exercising. Um, but anyways, back to our, us bodybuilders. So, you know, check that blood glucose with your blood work um, fasted. Your HbA1c, which is going to be three months average of your blood glucose numbers. Most labs, the top end is going to be 5.6. Um, check your fasted insulin as well, guys, because a lot of people don't realize... You know, you have insulin resistance, you have hyperinsulinemia, uh, insulinemia, so you don't want your body to be pumping out high amounts of insulin. Again, um, you know, your pancreas is going to, you know, start to burn out and you, those cells are going to become very um, not as receptive. So if you're pumping out high amounts of insulin, it's going to, you know, hit a wall eventually. Again, it's very inflammatory. It's not good for the heart, not good for the arteries. Um, and, you know, your body isn't doing its job of storing those nutrients and using them for energy um so you have your hba1c you have your fasted glucose which they usually include on your blood work as well uh you have your fasted insulin and then you have the c peptide as well um which shows if your body is not producing enough insulin or too much um so those are very good numbers with your blood work that you guys can use for data um obviously we're not doing blood work all the time so make sure you get the blood glucose meter and stay on top of that so <clears throat> as bodybuilders a lot of us do use uh, growth hormone and growth hormone is very, uh, you know, it, it's going to cancel insulin in most of us. So, for instance, I have a good friend. He's a type 1 diabetic, and he tried using insulin years ago when he competed. 
And, you know, the first shot, his, his blood glucose shot over 300 and it would not go down. He tried it for a week. No matter how much he bumped up his basal insulin, his Humalog with each meal, um, it was not budging. He was completely insulin resistant, couldn't use it. So imagine it happening with us body, but especially when you get into the higher doses. People say you don't have to worry about lower doses, but everybody is different. So some people may use it and notice some insulin resistance at a lower dose. Rare, but it does happen. So <clears throat> high amounts of food plus insulin are eventually going to hit a wall with you. Um, so again, get that blood glucose meter. So we have some telltale physical signs and we have some, uh, d you know, blood, the blood work markers and some data you can use to find it. Um, so what do you, what do you do if you f figure out that you are insulin resistant? Some pretty general advice, some pretty easy advice, um, is again, you know, you're going to want to bring down those carbohydrates. You don't want to drop them down to zero. I mean, I like to say a general rule of thumb is to drop them maybe by 30 to 35%. Of course, this depends on how severe the insulin resistance is. Um, I do also like with my clients' programs to have on their off days lower carbs anyway, so the body can just resensitize. You're giving that pancreas a break. Um, you won't shrink. So this was my, what I did wrong the last few months, and I knew I was doing it. Um, this is why I don't like to coach myself. Um, I was eating high amounts of food every single day, up to 1,000 grams of carbs, and that was not smart. I was also slacking on taking my GDA as well, which we're going to get into. So if you're trying to reverse your insulin resistance, um, let's bring those carbohydrates down about 30 35%. On your off days, you could bring them down 50 60%. Um, up the cardio. Definitely get the cardio, guys. We need some more activity. We need your body moving. Um, bring up your healthy fats, salmon, uh, mac nut oil, uh, omega threes, omega sixes, all very important in keeping the body insulin sensitive. Um, so on top of that as well, with your carb meals, I highly recommend you guys pick up new ethics formulations, GDA max, um, take one with each carb meal that you have, uh, and it was based around berberine. So if you're going to use an over the counter GDA, make sure it is based around berberine. Berberine works very similar to metformin which is great because a lot of people that use metformin, they get heart side effects, so you can use berberine in place. Obviously, metformin is a great um, you know, drug to use for preventative purposes if you guys have access to it. But if you don't, pick up the new ethics GDA Max. I've seen blood sugar readings on it. It does work. So we have up to cardio, lower those carbs down by 30 35%, or maybe more depending on how severe it is. On the off days, bring them way down. Um, bump up your healthy fats, omega-3s, omega-6s. Throw some salmon in your diet if uh, if you like salmon. It's a great fat source. Some mac nut oil. Um, there are some other sources off the top of my head, but I'm just trying to spitball this without making it too long. Um, and then monitor your blood uh, your blood glucose every morning. Stay on top of it. No, don't have any cheat meals. Stay strict with it because you're just going to delay the process. So it may take. I've had people's insulin this has come down in a week. Some people take two. Some people take three. Um, if you are taking human growth hormone. Um, I would say drop it out completely. Some people say lower it down to a lower dose. I mean, if you want to get it done in a quick fashion, drop it out. It's not going to hurt you. Again, we're trying to get this done in a efficient and as speedy process as possible so you can get back to growing. And you're going to want to ease back into that. So there you have it on how to, very general ways on how to reverse it. How can you prevent it from happening in your off season so you don't have to keep taking steps back? Um, again, watch your blood glucose. Um, when your food is high, moderate, whatever it is, keep that GDA max from New Ethics in with every carb meal. Um, it, it truly does help shuttle the nutrients. Your body doesn't have to produce as much insulin to, you know, shuttle those nutrients. I've seen GDAs work with type 1 diabetics. Their insulin use went way down. So the proof is in the pudding with them, guys. You know, I highly, highly recommend them. I recommended them to clients for the last six years. They are staples. Um, you know, just watch your food. Um, of course, when you pair fats with carbohydrates that, you know, that glucose index is going to stay up higher. So, you know, normally if you have just carbs and protein, it's going to come up and it's going to come down. So again, very generally speaking, I'm not going to use big words. So if you're combining you know, your protein, your carb, and let's say a fat source, it's going to stay higher for longer. And then next thing you know, eating two to three hours later, you're coming up here, coming down, and you're coming up, and it's just staying constantly high. So your body is constantly pumping out insulin. Those receptors are starting to really dull down. Um, GDA max with every carb meal 
healthy fats, make sure you have fibrous vegetables in your diet. I do also recommend having a, a fiber supplement in place. Keep some sort of cardio in place in the off season. Um, watch your growth hormone dosages in the off season on your off days. Bring the carbs back down low just to resensitize a bit. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's a general, um, some general steps you can take on how to prevent, how to um, <clears throat> test and how to see that you actually have insulin resistance and how to reverse it. So, you know, I hope this is as simple as possible for you guys. Um, I'm not a big science word guy or anything like that. I need things to be simply explained to me so I can understand. So um, if you guys, you know, decide to use my advice, feel free to comment below. Tell me about your results. Um, if there's anything you guys want to see, feel free to DM me on Instagram. Uh, you know, I would love to get content out that you guys want to see. Um, if you don't know what to do and you're looking for a nutrition coach to help you, I can help you with these things as well. So just go on CardoNutrition.com or feel free to just DM me on Instagram and uh, maybe we can be a good fit to work together. So until next time, guys, thank you for watching.